uh, is prayer, is prayer. And then you find out what it isn't, and not, now what is it? Well, how's it supposed to work? How's it supposed to function? We're going to take a look at the frequency. How often should you pray? Take a look at the focus of prayer, the content of prayer, and how do you apply all this? What's the mechanics of making it work individually for you and me? Okay. Any question where we're headed? That's kind of the objectives. I'm used to doing that at work. So you kind of know where we're going. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I sound louder than I normally do. Good to have volume. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we'll begin in verse 14. Verse 14, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, Support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to look into your word and may the word be engrafted into our souls so that it becomes so much a part of our thinking that the outward responses become evident of the inward working of your word within our hearts. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, how, how frequently does the apostle say that we should pray without ceasing? Well... I'm getting ready to leave in just a little bit when we're done, head to uh, O'Hare. How do you pray without ceasing when you're driving on 90 East? Huh. Uh, what's that? It's when, you need it most. it's when you need it most, but I better be watching what I'm doing and be focused. You know, these highways up here confuse me real quickly. You know, it becomes 90 and 190, and next thing you know, you're trying to figure out how to get to the airport. But praying without ceasing is an attitude and a thought process that every saint is supposed to have within their thinking. Now, how do you pray without ceasing? And he says, you know, in, in verse 18, in everything give thanks. We're going to see that again, that in everything. You know, how do you give thanks in everything? You know what in everything means? Paul's in prison. He's in everything. Okay, both the good and the bad and everything give thanks. That's not natural, is it? So the, the, what prayer does is take some understanding you have in your heart and it does something with it, okay? So let's go back to Romans chapter 8. We're going to come back to 1 Thessalonians later. Um, Romans chapter 8. I was thinking on the uh, sessions I've been able to make this week, how many times have you been to Romans this week? <laughs> Romans 8, I'm sorry, Romans 8. Been there quite a bit, haven't we? So having been to Romans 8 several times, uh, we'll, uh, we'll endeavor to uh, over, overrun some of those, those verses, but with a different intent. Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You know, you know, we're filled with the religious system. I came from the Baptist world, and I was fairly faithful to attendance. Anybody that's got that background, what we do on Wednesday nights in the Baptist world? Prayer it's prayer meeting. What's it start with? God's intervention in my life, how He answered my prayers. And I'd always sit there and go, He isn't doing that for me. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Well, you can ask enough people, you'll find out exactly what's wrong with me. But why do they do that, and why does it not work that way? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmaries, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now, there's a colon there, and that's, I'm going to stop there for just a second. And if you'll come back a little bit earlier in the chapter, in verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? You know that in, that preposition in is critical. 
This is not to us or on us. It's in us. There's something God is doing for Himself in us. For the earnest expectation, the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. We're going to come back to that. So if it's on another page in your Bible like it is mine, we're going to go back to that. Now, a colon is there to give a list of things or to give further explanation or illustration. So you get a little bit further explanation. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Colon. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But you know, this is the primer to understand we need to know what we should pray for as we ought. Okay? Notice what else it says. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings. Now, what are groanings? Those are those prayers, those petitions within your soul for the infirmities of life. Okay? Verse 22. For we know the whole, that the whole creation does what? groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Groaneth, the whole creation. Next verse, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also groan, where? Within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. Now that hope out there is a sustaining influence designed to be in the individual saint. But notice back over in verse 26, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Who's making the intercession there? Spirit. You know what that frequency probably is? It doesn't say that there. Without ceasing. See the parallel? Verse 27, And he that searches the hearts, that's our hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for whom? You notice that's plural? The saints. That's the body. Okay? According to, what's that? The will of God. Now, you know, I've heard that. Uh, you know, it's interesting. People, oh, I've got to know the will of God. And they're looking for some extra terrestrial response, a voice from God to find. It's right in here. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 4, he said, uh, this is the will of God concerning you, even your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication. That's a pretty easy one to figure out, isn't it? He maketh intercession for the saints according to. It's in harmony with the will of God. Have you ever had buyer's regret? Every time I buy a new car and I'm six months into payments, I go, what in the world did I do that for? <laughs> had the itch, had to have it, got it, now I don't want it. You can't take them back and get your money back. You're stuck, okay? God's prayer. And as we begin, we're going to look at Ephesians 3 and see the content of one of Paul's prayers concerning us. God's prayer is always according to what? The will of God. So look, look at verse 28. And we know that all things, okay, Everything that God is purposing in Christ. Well, let me finish the verse and I'll go back to the all things. Work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to what? You know what it's all about? You know what the focus of prayer is? The Lord Jesus Christ. It's His eternal purpose. We participate in that because we're where? We're in Him. And His eternal purpose, when you look at the focus of prayer, when God, the Holy Spirit, continued down through the passage, for whom He did foreknow, them He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. There's a destiny in the purpose of God concerning His Son, and guess what the focus of prayer is for God, the Holy Spirit? It's that end that we participate in. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, Brother Kenny went through this passage this morning, them he also called. You know how he called them? By the gospel in, uh, in Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. 
Whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, notice the tense of the glorification, them he also glorified. Certainty, purpose. So when, when God the Holy Spirit is making intercession, interceding for me and you, it's the corporate body and its purpose in eternity future in Christ. Okay? So, groanings, inaudible prayer, everything according to the will of God, His purpose. Now, if you would come over to Ephesians chapter 3. There were four of these prayers in Paul's prison epistles. And I don't know that I'll get time to go through more than just one of them, but Ephesians chapter 3 is one of those prayers. When Paul's praying for the saints, he's giving you the heart of what he's praying for himself as well. Because he's not going to pray for you something any different than what he needs. Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse uh, 13. Ephesians 3, 13. Wherefore, my former father-in-law said, whenever you see that or therefore, you need to go back and find out why he's doing that. That's pointing back to the, pre the verses that precede it. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribula tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we think it's going to be talking about. Go ahead. Yeah, you can say it. Prayer. Okay. Do you have to bow your knees to pray? It'd be rough to get to O'Hare this afternoon. <laughs> Matter of fact, I might get one of those blue lights pulling me over asking me what, I'm, what I think I'm doing. Verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with all might by his spirit in the inner man. Where? In the inner man. Prayer is not designed to fix the circumstances. It's designed to have an impact in you in the midst of those circumstances. That He would grant you according to the riches of His grace to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to... What's that next word? Comprehend, that means more than just memorizing verses. It's actually more of the application of the understanding. Comprehend. You don't just understand how to draw the chart and where you fit and slice us into it, but you comprehend what His purpose is in you individually as part of the body. You may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and depth and height. Now we're going to come back to that in just a second. You need to comprehend something about everything he's accomplished during the dispensation of the grace of God. Over in uh, Romans 11, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, you need to understand that blindness in part is happening in Israel until, okay, this is temporary. We've got a special provision by God. 2,000 years, that's a long time where God is not dealing with the nation of Israel by His covenant with them. You may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God, now to Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in, in us, unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Come back up to verse 18, okay? May be able to comprehend with all saints. So how many saints are supposed to know what he's talking about here? All of us, right? Okay? What is the breadth? What is the breadth of Christ? Comprehend what that is in him, the breadth of Christ. Come back to chapter 2. Start in verse 11. Prior to the Apostle Paul, where was God's ministry in the earth? Israel, and who was excluded? Us. Now I say us, uh, 
I can't take that last name and say it's not Jewish, so I don't know if it's us or not. But anyway, us. When you look at that, chapter 2, verse 11, Wherefore remember, you being in time past, now you need to appreciate as Gentiles, we don't necessarily today, because we didn't live in an age where we were excluded unless we became part of Israel through circumcision as a proselyte. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now. In Christ Jesus, you who were far off are brought where? Nigh, we're near. Okay? Prophetically, it didn't exist apart from Israel. God has done something. It's gone all over the world, and He's made it available for everyone without distinction. That's the breadth. The length. Look at chapter 1, verse 4. When did this begin? When was this planned, and when did it start? Chapter 1, verse 4. According as He hath chosen us in Him, when? Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Uh, chapter, keep your hand there in chapter 1. Go over to chapter 3, verse 11. Chapter 3, verse 11. According to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, that you might know the breadth, the length, and the depth. The depth that the love of Christ has gone and His purpose. Look at chapter, chapter 2, verse 1. Now, when Paul's praying for them, he says, you need to understand these things. You need to comprehend them. They need to be a part of your thinking. You know what it is? You don't get drawn away by the law that you see them being enticed by in 1 Timothy and Ephesus. You know, teachers of the law neither understanding what they're doing. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We were on our way to the lake of fire. Wherein in time past you walked according to that course, among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. God quickened us. He went down into the depths of Gentile depravity and pulled you and I out of it by the gospel. Height, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who what? Hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where? Heavenly places. We're part of what He's doing in the heavenlies, even today while we're sitting here in Chicago. Okay. So when, Paul, when Paul's praying, back, back over in chapter 3 again, you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth understanding. Everything we looked at there is just little pieces of the macro that Paul teaches that we understand. And notice what he says about the love of Christ. You take that understanding wherever you are today. And to know the love of Christ with which passeth knowledge. You know that knowledge? God the Holy Spirit works within the believer to cause that knowledge that you have, the love of Christ, comes out of that understanding you have, no matter how much it is, and it surpasses that. Carol Fisher was driving us back from Walker's the other day, and she was staying at the speed limit. It's like she was parked. <laughs> Everybody was passing by. It's the same sort of thing. Where you're at and what you understand, God will show His love in Christ when you know the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of how you became part of Him, okay? No, um, 
Now, to, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that he might be filled, that ye might be filled with, the, with the full, all the fullness of God. Now, unto him that is able to do, you know, that uh, buyer's regret in prayer, it, you know, it'd be terrible if God gave you everything you wanted. Wouldn't your life be a real mess? If there was that intervention in the physical world to give you exactly what you wanted? He did that a couple times for Israel. Um, and uh, the outcome was not so good. They got exactly what they wanted. They wanted a king, and they got King Saul. And uh, so, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, I'm sorry, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, those groanings that work within the heart of the inner man, that's that prayer, that prayer thinking. Uh, you know, I do it all the time. It's nice that I have to drive 45 minutes to work in the dark at 4.30 in the morning because I have no distractions, no distractions. According to the power that worketh in us, in us unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. When you look at Paul's prayer for the saints, Paul's prayer for himself is that those things would have an impact in his inner man just as he expected it hoped it would in theirs. Come over to Philippians chapter 4. Application. It's nice to be in all these passages everybody's already been in. That's one nice thing about Thursday. Uh, verse 1, Philippians 4, 1. Therefore, my dear uh, brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Down to verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your gentle patience be known to all men. Don't be known for being cantankerous. I, was, I, I remember that uh, I think it was Brother Alex was, uh, oh, no, John Verstegen was teaching on the, uh, the tabernacle and talked about the skin, the tabernacle on the outside. It was made out of badger skin one of those cantankerous animals. You know what I mean? Let your gentle patience be known to all men. Be known for that rather than someone that has a bunch of facts that tries to ramrod them down their throat. Let your gentle patience, your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful. Don't be filled with care for anything. Now, how many people, don't raise your hand. How many people in their life have been filled with care at times, so overwhelmed that the care is all they could think about? Okay? Paul says don't be that way. Will life put you there? Yeah. If the understanding... I had people trying to help me through one of those periods of time was 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the comfort that's there. Guess where that did not exist? It didn't exist in my inner man. It wasn't part of my thinking. I had not embraced it by faith, becoming integrated into my soul. And you could have beat me with a sledgehammer and it did just as much you know, good at the time. So the more that you store up the understanding, the comprehension in your soul, when life does have those little twists and turns, and if you live, it's gonna, you're going to have them. God's Word is designed to function you in that time through the vehicle of prayer. Because you know what, you know what, you know what hurt does? It creates groanings. You don't utter, you just hurt on the inside. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but. Notice I said we're going to have in everything again. Paul over in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, In everything do what? Give thanks. But in everything. By prayer and supplication, earnest entreaty, Lord, help me. <laughs> With, well, we're back to 1 Thessalonians again, 518. Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and you'll get what you want. You'll get what you need. What do you need in life? You need peace. You need that relaxed calmness, that gentle patience in verse 5. And the peace of God, which passeth 
That's that same thing we saw in Ephesians chapter 3. The love of Christ. Passive knowledge. And passeth all understanding shall keep both your thinking processes, your mind, and your soul, your heart. The real you on the inner side is aching. Or rejoicing. You know, you know, good things come into life can mess you up just as good, uh, much as bad things. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. Most of us don't. We usually have the other end. And the peace of God which passeth understanding, all understanding, all understanding, no matter how much you know, this peace is designed to work in you. You know, I, I really appreciate the men who have been in the Word of God longer than I have are more earnest with the time they've been in it. But this peace that God has, has for every saint. You've got to have some understanding for it to work. The understanding is the basis. It comes out of that understanding and it passes it, surpasses it. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, as you're working through and functioning in life, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are true. Well, what is the basic truth that we always need to be reminded of? You know, you know the nature of a human being is, is, is that we are just like Satan. Our nature is the deity of the creature. You know, sometimes we think it's all us. That's who we are. We think it's, you know, it's all about me. Who's it about? Romans 8. The focus of God, the Holy Spirit, is the will of God, and it's the purpose in Jesus Christ. How often is it the purpose in Ken? Okay. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, the truth of the gospel, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried and raised again the third day, that is what provides life, nothing else. Uh, in Ephesians 4.15, the Apostle Paul, when he goes through that dissertation on you know, the, the purpose of completing the Word of God. He says, now speaking the truth in love. Notice he says, not a truth, that's the definite article, the truth. There's a body of understanding that belongs to us, that we are accountable and we are responsible for ensuring we keep it intact when we share it. And that we do share it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, um, since we're um, go over and take a look at First Thessalonians chapter four. Keep your hand there. We're going to stay in Philippians. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse 9, but as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another, and indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. Which I think is interesting. Macedonia seems to have the Philippians and the Thessalonians, they're kind of the saints to model after. In Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you be study to be quiet and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, and that you walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. Paul says, we have not handled the word of God dishonestly. Clarity, that we stand. When, when Paul says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, we're going to go through this list. There's six items, and then there's two that kind of tie together. When you go through these six, honesty, just, Acts 7.52, when uh, Stephen is talking to the leaders in the nation of Israel, what does he say? He talks to them and he says, you have crucified the just one. So where, when I'm thinking of just, what would I think of? Well, I got the little, uh, this thing turns colors on you, this little bracelet, justify. What do I think about when I think justify? I have the righteousness of my Savior, the just one. So when I think, think at the end of this passage, let me go through the passage and come back to a couple of these other words. Whatsoever things are 
pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, semicolon, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We look back in earlier in 1 Thessalonians, he says, study to be quiet. Do your own business. Don't worry about somebody else. You be who you are before Christ. Think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Seen in me. How do you see in somebody? You see it by how that word works and functions through them in the details of life. Come back up to that list again. Things that are pure. Um, in Titus 2, well, I'll go to Titus 2.14. God's purpose and function in the individual saints and the body of Christ today. Titus 2.14. Actually start up in verse 12, teaching us the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly godliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope, that's that groaning in Romans chapter 8. We groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, one that stands out that you can look at and say, in me, that what you see in me, do. What you see in me, do. Peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Back to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are Lovely. Well, what would you think about when you think of lovely? Anybody? Flowers. flowers. You think of flowers. I like that. Yeah. Oh, I need to send some. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> lovely. Things that are lovely. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. My beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Hold your hand there and do a little bit more navigating and go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 5. We're coming back to Philippians, chapter 4. It's interesting, the Song of Solomon, you see uh, Solomon has three phases in life, and this is the apostate phase, uh, where he brings idolatry into Israel, the groves and the high places and everything else. But you get over to Song of Solomon chapter 5, and to my knowledge, this is the only visible uh, physical description of our Savior in Song of Solomon chapter 5 while he was on the earth. Uh, look at verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, red cheeks. The chiefest among 10,000, his head is the most fine gold, his locks are bushy. And black as a raven, his eyes are as the eyes of, of doves by the rivers of waters. Washed with milk and fitly set, his cheeks are as bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies, flowers, uh, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. Go to verse 16. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether, what's that next word? Lovely. Everything in that list in Philippians 4 is going to take you back to whom? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Altogether lovely, this is my beloved. You know what? When he talks about us, he, we are accepted where? In the beloved. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> And this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Now, I realize that that's dealing with their Messiah. And the deception in, 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 in the Song of Solomon is the enticement of the Antichrist to draw them away from that path of rectitude. But, so when you come back over here, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good report. Good report. Uh, Paul in First uh, Thessalonians five says he says, abstain from all appearance of evil. When people look at you, have a good report. They may not like your doctrine, but it doesn't have to be your attitude that's the issue. Okay? Of good report. Semicolon. Okay? We're, gonna, we're not starting a new thought, but we're going to break this apart. If there be any virtue, when the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, going through the nation of Israel and the woman reached out and touched the hem of his garment, what did he say? Virtue has gone from me. He felt it come out. Virtue, the Lord Jesus Christ. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise. You know, it's up there in, uh, let's see, where is it? I think it's verse 1, uh, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice leads to praising Him who is worthy of praise. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of... There's that word peace again. That's a calm, relaxed status in the midst of a crumbling world around you. Whether the borders are going away and the government's going to come through your front door any day, and it may happen. But regardless of the circumstances, God has, the God of peace shall be with you, and the peace that passeth understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus in verse 7. That's in response to your prayer thinking. That's prayer. You know, in, in verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, and let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth, it's not separate from the understanding, but it exceeds, it excels that, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All you need is Romans 8, and know you've got a hope out there that nobody can take away from you. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, come down to verse 11. He's, he, he's received a gift from the Philippians. It's kind of interesting in Macedonia. They're the only ones that initially said, we need to give you something to be able to do the ministry. He's the only one. Uh, that, that local assembly. And the only reason they hadn't got it to him before this time is they didn't have the opportunity. They were looking for him. But you know he's itinerant, and here he's in jail. you got to find him. <laughs> Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Now, the Apostle Paul gets saved around 34 A.D., a year after the crucifixion of our Lord. So how many years? We're about 30 years into his ministry here. You think he figured it out the first couple of weeks after meeting with the Lord Jesus Christ? No. The time and circumstances are designed to have the doctrine, the understanding work out through you. And the way that works is you continuously meditate on those things and communicate with our Savior about them. You don't know what that is? That's prayer. It's not just asking for things. It's thanking Him for those things He's provided for us to be able to endure and survive with joy. Not that I speak in respect to want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased. You notice it doesn't say by base himself. There were other people abasing him. He was being abased, knocked down. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ with strength. I can either have it all or not have anything. And what's the common denominator regardless of the circumstances for Paul? Verse 11. In whatever state, whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I can do all things through Christ with strength with me, the contentment, due to the working of the Word and the communication to yourself. Those groanings that can't be uttered is you talking to yourself internally. You know who else knows? Before you even ask or even communicate with the Heavenly Father, you know what He knows? He knows what you're about to say because He's God. Okay? And can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Verse 19, after He thanks them for their gift, He, uh, he appreciates it, not that the, He needs the gift, 
because he's learned how to be what? Abound and su- I mean, abased and suffer need. He's learned how to do that. He said, but my God shall supply all your... You know, it's wonderful to be uh, Bible believers because you look for singular and plural. What's the difference between need and needs? You know, when my kids were little, we would go through roses, and that, that, oh, that's a chain that's been gone a long time. And they go, I want, I want that, I want that, I want that. And what would we say? Well, you don't need it. You know what they learned to change that to, don't you? They're pretty smart. Yeah, I need that, I need that, I need that. What is the need that every saint needs? Every saint. Christ in us. In the midst of turmoil, what do you need in the midst of turmoil? Peace. Contentment. They tie integrally together and they go back to verse seven, uh, verse 6. Be anxious, careful. Don't be filled with care for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Notice that last phrase? With thanksgiving. In everything. Come back over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, which is where we began. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. Pray. Part of prayer that you really have to consider is that Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he says, give attendance to reading. Okay, you need to do that. And then he says, he goes through, uh, hold your hand there, let me read it so I don't. That's one nice thing about getting old. You don't trust your memory quite as well, quite as much. You go back and read the text. He says, Till I come, give attendance to reading in 1 Timothy 4.13, to exhortation to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. We talked about the transition time. Timothy got it through, through, through the sign gifts. He got it by laying on of hands. How do you get it today? You don't. You don't get that gift. You study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman. Okay? Verse 15, he says, Meditate upon these things. I can't separate that meditate, that think on these things, from prayer. Prayer is that working within you, the understanding communicating with your heavenly Father, communicating over the troubles in life and the good things, things you want to do, continue to do, not just the things you want to avoid. You know, that put off, put on, you don't always have to keep putting off stuff. Some of that put on, you need to keep putting on. Don't let it go. Pray without ceasing. In everything, every circumstance, every facet of life, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, in Christ Jesus concerning you. It was also concerning Paul. That was God's will for Paul. That's God's will for you and I. Verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he, they calleth you, who also will do it. Father, we thank you for your Son and all that he's accomplished for us in our behalf and as he works by faith through the understanding that we have gleaned from your word, may we always be careful to give you the honor and the glory that are yours. Amen.